Hello viewers, in this session uh, we will uh, we will actually state and prove some uh, estimation theorems which will be useful for us to uh, prove uh, Cauchy's theorems. So, firstly recall uh, from the last session uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus for complex functions which said that uh, the antiderivative uh, for a function if it exists on all of the region, okay, then the integration around a simple closed curve um, which is contained in the region okay, uh, okay, uh, is equal to uh, 0. So, I will start with the following uh, theorem, estimation theorem. Okay. So, um, if f of t is u of t plus i times v of t. Okay, so, if it is written as uh, its real and imaginary parts that way okay, is a continuous function. Of a real parameter t okay, uh, over uh, okay, uh, defined on an interval a comma b let us say okay, then the integration Okay, so, this is I will put this in parentheses. So, a b uh, is in the domain of definition. Okay. So, then uh, we have the following estimate. Okay. So, uh, integration from a to b f of t d t okay, is less than or equal to uh, the integration from a to t of the modulus of f of t uh, d t. Okay. So, uh, at times when it is uh, difficult to actually compute the complex integration uh, itself, the contour integration itself uh, due to the complexity of the function involved or of uh, or due to the complexity of the uh, curve involved, uh, such estimates are useful. Okay. We will put them to uh, regular use okay. and um, here is one estimation theorem which tells that the modulus uh, of uh, integration from a to b of f of t d t okay, uh, is less than or equal to uh, the integration of the modulus of f of t uh, from a to b t t. Okay. So, um, here is a proof of uh, this theorem. Okay. Uh, so, if integration from uh, a to b uh, f of t d t is 0. Okay. So, this is one case. Uh, suppose that this integration is uh, equal to 0, uh, then uh, clearly the inequality is true, then inequality the above inequality is true, because on the right hand side uh, what you have is uh, the integrand uh, is always a positive number, the modulus of a complex number f of t well it is non negative number okay, always. So, when you integrate a non negative number from a to b uh, that is going to be uh, greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, if the integral itself is 0 then uh, the inequality holds. Okay. So, now uh, suppose otherwise. Okay. So, now suppose uh, integration from a to b. Okay. So, suppose that integration from a to b of f of t d t is uh, non uh, zero okay so then uh, what we can do is then we can write okay then write integration from a to b f of t d t which is a complex number okay uh, this definite integral is a complex number write this as r e power i theta Okay, where r is its modulus and theta is its argument. Okay. We get uh, the modulus of integration from a to b f of t d t is uh, equal to r and r hence is equal to uh, integration from a to b uh, e power minus i theta f of t d t okay, because of uh, this writing here. 
Okay. So, since uh, r e power i theta is this integral, you can multiply on both sides by e power minus i theta and push the e power minus i theta into the integrand, because uh, after all the uh, integration is uh, free of theta. Okay. So, you can uh, push the uh, e power minus i theta into the integrand uh, to get this expression. Okay. And now, uh, what uh, we also know about this integral uh, is as follows. Okay. So, r is equal to of course, the real part of r itself, which is the real part now of uh, this integ integral a to b e power minus i theta f of t uh, d t. Okay. So, r is this. So, I am uh, substituting r is this. Okay. And we also know by the definition of this integral itself. Okay. So, you will recall that uh, the way this integral is defined integration from a to b some g of t d t. Okay. Uh, what is this? This is nothing but uh, integration from a to b real part of g of t d t plus i times integration from a to b the imaginary part of g of t d t. Okay. This is how we have defined this integral, okay. this, uh, this uh, complex integral. Okay. So, um, so, this, so, this can be written as the real part of this is nothing but the uh, integration from a to b of the real part of the function inside e power minus i theta uh, f of t. So, the integrand here is uh, the real part of e power minus i theta. Uh, f of t uh, d t. Okay. So, let me isolate the integrand real part of e power minus i theta f of t. This is less than or equal to of course, uh, the modulus of that complex uh, number itself depending on t. So, uh, this is less than or equal to the modulus of e power minus i theta f of t, because the real part of a number is always less than or equal to its modulus okay and this in turn is equal to the modulus of e power minus i theta times the modulus of f of t okay and um, which is equal to the modulus of f of t because the modulus of e power minus i theta is always one okay so independent of theta so this uh, allows us to uh, write Okay, this integral r is equal to uh, integration what was r okay r is from here r is what we want on the left hand side okay so r is equal to integration the modulus of integration from a to b of f of t uh, dt okay this is equal to uh, this quantity okay so, this is equal to the integration from a to b of the real part of e power minus i theta f of t uh, d t, which is now um, by this estimate here is less than or equal to uh, the integration from a to b of the modulus of f of t d t. Okay. And this is what we want. Okay. So, that shows that proves this uh, proposition. So, um, that is an estimate that we are going to use from time to time. Okay. This is a simple uh, theorem. Okay. So, uh, for example, we are going to put this to use uh, in the uh, very next uh, proposition. Okay. So, here is another estimation theorem. Okay. So, here is another estimation theorem. Okay. It is in this form that uh, uh, this theorem is mostly useful, the previous theorem is mostly useful. Okay. So, let uh, uh, gamma uh, be a contour with a parameter interval a b. Okay. Let uh, f of z is equal to u of x y plus i times v of x y with the usual agreement that z is x plus i y. Okay. Let this be a continuous function. Okay, um, be a continuous function on the contour gamma. Okay, with the additional uh, constraint that the modulus of f of z is less than or equal to m for uh, for all z belongs to 
gamma star. Okay. Whenever z is on the trace of gamma, suppose that the modulus of f of z is less than or equal to m. Okay. So, um, with this condition, the modulus of the integration over gamma, the contour integration of uh, f of z over gamma, okay, uh, the modulus of that is less than or equal to m times L of gamma, okay, where L of gamma okay, is the length of the contour uh, gamma okay, given by uh, integration from A to B of gamma prime of t in modulus uh, d t. Okay. So, if you have a continuous uh, complex valued function defined on uh, well uh, it is continuous function on the trace of gamma, okay, then uh, uh, the integration the contour integration of f on that uh, contour okay uh, is less than or equal to uh, the maximum value of f or the uh, uh, or the bound of f uh, of the modulus of f okay times the length of the uh, of the curve gamma itself okay so um, so this uh, this length of gamma okay this must be familiar to the viewer from multivariable uh, calculus. Okay. So, re recall that uh, this is nothing but integration from A to B of uh, square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared d t. If I write gamma of t as x of t plus i times y of t. Okay. So, um, the viewer might have seen this in the context of functions of two uh, variables or um, uh, curves in R 2. Okay. So, if gamma two, gamma of t is x of t comma y of t, which is a function from R to R 2, okay, uh, then um, the length of gamma under appropriate conditions, okay, gamma being differentiable, uh, smooth etcetera, okay, the length of gamma can be computed using uh, this uh, integral. Okay. So, that is the exact length that we are using here, it is nothing but uh, in this context uh, gamma prime the modulus of gamma prime okay. and um, put this in parentheses. Okay. So, uh, the length of gamma is integration of modulus of gamma prime okay. and um, we have uh, this estimate which will be used from time to time. Okay. So, the proof is once again um, easy, okay. so we will use the previous theorem. Okay. So, using the previous result, using the previous theorem, what we have is that the modulus of the contour integration of f of z dz okay, on uh, f of z on gamma okay, is less than or equal to uh, the modulus of integration from A to B. I am just writing, spelling out what the uh, contour integration is. Okay. So, this is uh, integration from A to B of f of gamma of t uh, of gamma prime of t uh, d t okay. and this is less than or equal to well this is actually an equality this is equal to this okay. and then this is less than or equal to integration from A to B this uses the previous theorem now. Okay. This is less than or equal to the uh, modulus of the integrand. Okay. So, the modulus of f of gamma of t okay, uh, times the modulus of gamma prime of t uh, d t. Okay. And this is less than or equal to well the modulus of f of gamma of t is always less than or equal to uh, m okay, whenever uh, well is always less than or equal to m because gamma of t is a point on the trace. Okay. So, this is less than or equal to integration from A to B of uh, m times uh, modulus of gamma prime of t uh, d t. Okay. But that is uh, equal to m times integration from A to B okay, of the modulus of gamma prime of t uh, d t 
okay, and this quantity is nothing but the length of gamma. So, this is equal to m times the length of the curve uh, the contour gamma. Okay. So, uh, so what we have shown is that the uh, contour integration of f on gamma is always less than or equal to m times l of gamma, okay, where m is the uh, bound on the absolute value of f on the contour gamma. Okay. So, that shows uh, this theorem and this is a very useful estimate uh, we will see. All right. So, um, we will see uh, one application of uh, this particular uh, estimate. So, here is an example which illustrates the use of uh, the estimation theorem. So, uh, the example is as follows uh, let r be a positive real number. greater than 1. Uh, let gamma r be the contour defined by r e power i t 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to pi. Okay. Show that limit as r goes to infinity the integration over gamma r of e power i z by z squared d z is equal to 0. Okay. So, what we will do is we will take the function e power i z by z squared okay, and we will estimate it on this given contour gamma r for r a large positive number because ultimately we are interested in limit as r goes to infinity. Okay. So, uh, let us look at the modulus of this function e power i z by z squared. Okay. So, uh, on gamma r okay, for large r, for large r uh, on gamma r what we have is this is equal to uh, e power i times well the contour is r e power i t okay, uh, the modulus of this and then of course, the modulus of r e power i t squared will be uh, r squared in the denominator. Okay. So, this is equal to uh, in the numerator we have e power i r e power i t I am going to write that as r cosine t plus i times r sin t in modulus divided by r squared. Okay. So, this is equal to e raised to i r cosine t minus r sin t by r squared this is in modulus. Okay. And uh, of course, the uh, modulus of e raised to uh, something is e raised to the real part of uh, that something. Okay. So, this is equal to e raised to minus r sin t by r square, because the modulus of i e raised to i r cosine t is 1. Okay. So, now notice that on gamma r, which is r e power i t, t goes uh, from 0 to pi. Okay. So, uh, on gamma r sin t is always uh, positive or equal to 0. Okay. Sin is positive in the first and second quadrants. Okay. So, uh, what we have is minus r sin t whatever be the value of r this is going to be less than or equal to 0. Okay. So, e raised to minus r sin t is uh, less than or equal to e raised to 0 which is 1 that is because the real exponential function is a strictly increasing function. Okay. And so, uh, here this expression uh, tells us that the modulus okay, so on gamma r for large r, okay, uh, the modulus of e power i z by z squared is less than or equal to uh, 1 by r squared. Okay. So, we will use this along with the estimation theorem. Okay. So, the integration the modulus of integration over gamma r of e raise to 
i z by z square d z by the estimation theorem is less than or equal to uh, integration over gamma r of the modulus of e power i z by z square times mod d z okay, which is less than or equal to uh, 1 by r square okay, uh, on gamma r this is bounded by 1 by r square integration of over gamma r of mod d z which uh, we know is the length of the curve gamma r. Okay. So, since gamma r is a semicircle okay, of radius r. So, this is less than or equal to or this is equal to 1 by r square times pi r this gives us uh, pi by r. Okay. So, from here we know that limit as z goes to uh, infinity of the modulus of integration over gamma r e power i z by z square d z is equal to limit as z r goes to sorry I apologize this is r goes to infinity okay. uh, limit as r goes to infinity of uh, pi by r which is equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, since if limit as r goes to infinity okay, of some complex numbers is 0, okay, then uh, it has to be that the limit of those complex numbers is also 0. Okay. So, we conclude that uh, limit as r goes to infinity of e power i z integral over gamma r of e power i z by z square d z has to be equal to uh, 0. Okay. So, uh, this completes uh, this example. So, with these uh, estimation theorems uh, what we will now do uh, is that uh, we will uh, look at Cauchy's theorem which is the fundamental theorem uh, uh, in complex analysis. Okay. So, it is uh, it's central to uh, complex analysis uh, of uh, functions of one variable okay. uh, and so uh, here is Cauchy's theorem. Okay, and a discussion of it. Okay. So, uh, firstly uh, before uh, I state uh, one or several versions of this theorem, I want to uh, introduce the concept of uh, the inside of a curve. Okay. So, here is um, here I will quote the Jordan's curve theorem. Okay. So, Jordan's curve theorem what it says is that if gamma. Okay, so, I will as I said I will uh, uh, confuse between uh, a contour and its trace in the complex plane. Okay. So, if uh, gamma is a, a simple closed contour in the plane in our case in the complex plane. Okay, uh, then the complement is a disjoint union of two regions. Recall that a region is a connected open set. Okay, so uh, the two regions are disjoint. Okay, they are uh, disconnected by gamma. Okay, and uh, okay, and that's the Jordan's curve theorem. Uh, for our purposes. Okay. So, intuitively this is very clear if you draw any uh, simple minded curve like that, okay, uh, simple closed uh, contour like that. Okay. So, then uh, there is this portion okay, in the complement of this in the complex plane, okay, uh, you have this portion which we will call 1 and then uh, that is called uh, okay, that will be the other region uh, 2. One of these components is unbounded okay, and uh, one and the other is bounded. Component is the same as region okay, is uh, bounded. So, then uh, we will define orientation okay, uh, of of these uh, regions okay, uh, of these curves. Okay. So, uh, orientation uh, in two ways one is positive orientation and negative orientation. 
Okay. So, uh, uh, a curve, okay. so a simple closed contour is said to be positively oriented okay if the points uh, on the inside okay on the bounded component or in the bounded component in the bounded component okay uh, fall to the left of uh, the contour when it is traced. Okay. So, intuitively this is clear once again. Okay. So, here is a contour okay. and suppose this is the this is the uh, orientation on the contour determined by its uh, parameter parameterization okay so then you notice that when you keep tracing the the uh, contour like that okay imagine yourself walking on that contour okay then this uh, bounded component appears to uh, the left of you okay uh, as you traverse the contour all the points will appear always uh, to the left okay whereas um, if you uh, if you have the other orientation of the same contour, namely suppose that the contour is oriented in that fashion, okay, then the points in the bounded component will appear to the right when you uh, walk on this contour uh, by the by the given orientation. Okay. So, this will be called a positive orientation of the contour and this will be called the negative orientation. Okay. So, this uh, we will uh, use later, but uh, the, but this is what we will mean by positively oriented and negatively oriented uh, simple closed contours. Okay. So, uh, likewise, okay, uh, likewise, likewise, I will say that um, a simple closed contour is said to be negatively oriented. Okay, if the uh, points in the bounded component determined by it, it determines the bounded component, right? So, if the uh, points in the bounded component determined by it uh, fall to the right of the contour. when it is traced. Okay. So, that is a negative and positively oriented simple closed contours. Okay. So, what we now need is that um, this, this bounded component will always will, will be called the inside of this uh, simple closed curve and this unbounded component will be called the outside of the uh, exterior of the simple closed curve. Okay. So, the bounded component has a name by the Jordan's curve theorem uh, there are bounded and unbounded components. Okay. So, the bounded region uh, for a simple closed curve contour okay, will be called the inside okay, of the curve of the contour. Okay, when the contour is okay, this is important when the contour is positively oriented. Okay, so uh, so only if the uh, contour is positively oriented. Okay, so uh, the unbounded uh, uh, component determined by the simple closed curve will become the inside uh, when uh, when the contour is uh, negatively oriented okay so uh, so just a, a remark okay
Okay, so here is a remark: uh, the unbounded component. This is not. This is relatively unimportant, but uh, I'll state it. I'll remark the following. Okay, so the unbounded component determined by a simple closed curve uh, will be the inside of the contour when the contour is negatively oriented. With this, uh, we will first see a very preliminary version of uh, Cauchy's theorem. And uh, this is a direct consequence of Cauchy Riemann equations uh, and, um, and Green's theorem for uh, function, uh, functions of uh, two real variables. Okay. So, uh, here is the uh, uh, statement. Okay. So, let f equals u plus i v. Okay. The, I am writing uh, f uh, as its real and imaginary parts like that u and i v. Okay, be uh, an analytic function okay, on a domain or on a region okay, uh, open connected set. Recall a region is an open connected non empty set okay, uh, on a region omega uh, such that. So, it is analytic means that its partial derivatives exist and uh, the Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied. Okay. Now, let us also assume that such that uh, the partials, okay, the partial derivatives of u and v are continuous in omega, in all of omega. Okay. Now, if okay, uh, also, I will say let let gamma be a simple closed contour okay, oriented positively. Such that gamma and the inside of gamma. So, basically the trace of gamma Okay, and the inside of gamma are contained in omega. Okay. So, in that event, okay, the integration okay, then the integration over gamma of f okay, of z d z, the contour integration of f on gamma is equal to 0. Okay. And the proof of this version, where we assume that the partial derivatives are continuous in omega okay, uh, is easy, it is directly follows from uh, Green's theorem. Okay. So, uh, here is the proof. Okay. So, the integration over gamma, the contour integration over gamma of u plus i v uh, d z okay, at z d z is nothing but the integration over gamma of u plus i v. Well, let us write z as x plus i y. So, that d z is d x plus i d y. Okay. And um, this gives us uh, integration over gamma okay, u d x uh, minus v d y upon multiplication plus i times uh, u d y plus v d x. Okay. And by the way, uh, we define these in, in, these integrals, these contour integrals. This is nothing but integration over gamma of u dx minus v dy okay, plus i times the integration over gamma of u dy plus v dx. Okay. And now, since uh, we assume that u and v, um, the partials of u and v uh, exist and are continuous on uh, omega okay and uh, and so in particular they are continuous on the inside of uh, gamma we can apply green's theorem so by green's theorem 
this is uh, nothing but okay the double integral over the closure of the inside of gamma of uh, minus dou v by uh, dou x minus uh, dou u by uh, dou y okay uh, of okay times dx dy okay uh, when this inside is parameterized okay uh, by x and y okay plus i times the double integral over the inside of uh, gamma of dou v uh, sorry dou u by dou y or dou u by dou x okay so this is u dy so i'll take its partial with respect to x minus uh, dou v by uh, dou y okay uh, times dx dy okay so now uh, one uses cauchy riemann equation since f is analytic at every point on uh, inside uh, inside this uh, gamma okay on i of gamma okay so uh, by cauchy riemann equations you know that minus dou v by dou x is uh, plus dou u by dou y okay so this is zero okay and so likewise dou u by dou x is dou v by dou y so this is zero okay by the cauchy riemann equations okay so you have this is equal to double integral over i of gamma of 0 dx dy plus i times okay and f gamma 0 dx dy which gives you 0 okay by the cauchy riemann equations and by the green's theorem for uh, regions for plane regions uh, you know that this um, contour integration uh, is indeed uh, 0 okay so this is the first version of cauchy's theorem uh, which was known uh, before uh, before Gursa uh, dropped okay, uh, a mathematician by name Gursa uh, dropped the uh, assumption that u the partial derivatives of u and v have to be continuous on the inside of uh, gamma. Okay. So, uh, we can indeed drop that assumption. Okay. Uh, so, all we need is that f is analytic. Okay. If f is analytic on the region gamma and if gamma is a simple closed curve uh, positively oriented such that uh, gamma star and inside of gamma are contained in omega, then the in contour integration of f is actually uh, equal to 0. Okay. So, that is uh, cauchy gursa theorem. Okay. We will see um, that version of Cauchy's theorem okay, in this statement. So, Cauchy's theorem. So, this is the end of this proof okay, Cauchy's theorem for a rectangle r is x plus i y such that a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b c less than or equal to x y less than or equal to d. Okay. So, it is that kind of region in the complex plane. Okay. So, x equals a x equals b y equals c y equals d. Okay. And let, uh, let do r denote the uh, the simple closed contour which is the boundary of this region r okay namely this these four straight lines okay which form a rectangle okay uh, with the orientation such that with the orientation such that uh, r is the inside of and r you consider the counterclockwise orientation on do uh, r okay so that gives you if you when viewed from the top if you take the counterclockwise orientation on do r then uh, r becomes the inside of this uh, uh, contour uh, do r okay so with this setup uh, if f is an analytic function on an open set containing r okay 
then integration over gamma the contour integration or sorry over do r of f of z dz okay with the set orientation okay uh, is equal to 0 okay so notice that all we are assuming is that f is analytic and we are not uh, demanding that the partial derivatives of the real and imaginary part be continuous on the inside okay so uh, it cauchy's theorem uh, maintains that this is equal to uh, 0 okay so uh, we will prove this version of cauchy's theorem uh, in the next session